So if you look in your Bibles and you ever read the book Joshua, Joshua 24, 14 to 15, this is Joshua talking and it says, Joshua said, now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshiped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day who you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now inhabit. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. So the timeline is November 10th, 2019. And the location is Elwood City, USA. And the situation is right now in your heart. Will you now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness and throw away the gods, your neighbors, and your families worship in this land today and serve the Lord? But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day who you will serve, the Lord God Almighty or the gods, small g, your neighbors, your families, and your friends serve in America today. And I hope you can all say, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. So you can serve only one master. It can be only one master of your heart. No one can serve two, for either he will hate one and love the other, or he will hold one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. And it goes on to repeat it. You cannot serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or else he will hold the one and despise the other. You really got to take note when something was repeated twice in the Bible. So in 1519, Captain Hernando Cortez landed in modern day Veracruz to start his now famous conquest of modern day Mexico. He landed with 600 men. I don't know how many ships, probably not that many. But as they landed in the harbor, he ordered everything to be taken off the ships. And then when they have all their stuff off, he gave the order to burn the ships. Far away, in a land that had never been before, he said, burn the ships. Now one of his, this is, this is where it kind of moves into possibly a legend, but the, the myth is that he, one of his commanders laughed, thinking that it was a joke. So he drew his sword and ran him through and killed him on the spot. It was no joke, not to him. And as those ships, as their only means of retreat, burned in the harbor, they all got drunk on rum. And they did it by the light of the blaze of the only thing that could get them back home. Onward was their only option now. Retreat is easy when you have the option. Think about that for a second. We all cling to something, our escape hatch or our exit strategy, then a negative connotation, it's our safety net just in case. What we fail to do is honestly complete that sentence, just in case, just in case. But in our heads, what's the rest of that sentence? If we're honest, we would say, that's my safety net in case I get scared. We postpone action until we no longer feel, free, feel f fear. Either that or our actions are so shallow and they weren't even worthwhile in the first place and we did it just because we wanted to fool ourselves into thinking something and we knew they were doomed before we even started. perhaps never truly meant to follow Christ with all we have in the first place. We have to learn to act decisively in spite of our fear. God calls us to give everything to it, all of it. Do you know that means our fears? That means our inadequacies? That means the things we're no good at? Yeah, you want to give the best to God, but He wants it all, everything. Our uncertainty and have faith that we are in His hands, not all states. What are you holding on to today? 
that stops you from living an entire life committed to the service of God? What ships have you left standing in the harbor? Burning things that make sense doesn't make sense. We love that phrase. We hide behind it. We tell ourselves that certain things don't make sense. That doesn't make sense to do that. that. That doesn't make any sense to act that way or think that way. It would have made sense for Cortez to just keep a ship or two in the harbor. But he was on a mission, and he knew that the only way to keep himself and his men focused and moving forward on that and only that mission was to take all options off the table. What Cortez did was force himself and his men to either succeed or die. Retreat was no longer an option. And I believe that to truly achieve the level of success we say we desire, there are times when we need to burn the ships, burn them all, leave nothing left. Have a party with the light of them burning if you want to, but burn them. The question I have to ask myself and not ask you is, what are your ships? What are you afraid to let go of? I know what I'm afraid to let go of. What are you afraid to let go of? My answer to that question is many things. I have and I am still clinging on to certain behaviors, thoughts, and perceptions that I should have burned up long ago. The good news is I'm still a work in progress and that God is a God of second chances. But what if I get, or get hurt or get killed today? Well, Revelations 14, 13 says, Then I heard a voice from heaven say, Write this, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor, for their deeds will follow them. There's a whole message in just those couple sentences, but we'll go there maybe later. So it seems to me like that that scripture, just like that scripture tells me that since all my best efforts are like dirty rags to the Lord, I need to walk away from those burning ships and follow him and him alone, which is the only true option forward, especially for those who can call themselves Christ followers, Christians. There's a song and another story that kind of rings in my mind when I think about the possible costs of following Jesus and what our response to even that must be. There's a song called, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. And there was a guy by the name of Dr. Job. He was also called the Billy Graham of India. He preached in 129 countries, sometimes the crowds as high as 500,000 people. He became a global voice for persecuted Christians and Muslim and communist nations. He and his family, through the whole time, was faced with severe persecution. Hindu militants in India failed in an attempt on his life in 1999, and in June of that year, they killed his only son, 21 years old, Michael, by running him down with a car in front of the medical center where he was becoming, going to learn to be a doctor so he could treat and help those people. Job died of a heart attack in August of 2012 while he was preaching in Hungary. And this is a story that he loved to tell. This guy knew about persecution. This guy knew about the possible costs. And this is one of his favorite stories. And he said, 150 years ago, there was a great revival in Wales. And as a result of that, many missionaries went to England, from England to northern India to spread the gospel. The region was very remote, and it was called Assam, and comprised hundreds of tribes. The tribal communities were very primitive and very aggressive. The tribesmen were also called headhunters. Because of a social custom, they required the male members of the community to kill and collect as many heads as possible. Uh, a man's strength was his ability and his ability to protect his wife was measured by the number of heads that he had collected and hung in the house. For all to see. 
when a youth of manageable age would try and collect as many heads as possible and hang them on the walls of his house. The more heads he had, the more eligible he was. Into this hostile and very aggressive community came a group of Welsh missionaries spreading the message of love, peace, and hope of Christ. Naturally, they were not welcomed with open arms. But one Welsh missionary finally succeeded in converting one man, his wife, and his two children. This man's faith proved contagious, and many villagers began to accept Christianity. Ah, but when you talk about Christ in the world, you make people mad. You make enemies. The village chief summoned them in front of everybody, and he called for the family that had converted first to renounce their faith or be executed. Moved by the Holy Spirit, the man sung his reply, I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. They shot his two children dead with arrows at his feet. Enraged at the refusal of the man, the chief ordered the archers to kill them. And as they were still twitching on the floor, the chief says, will you deny your faith? Or will you lose your wife as well? The man replied, singing, though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back. The chief was beside himself with fury and ordered his wife also shot down. In a moment, she joined her two children. And he asked for the last time, I will give you one more opportunity to defy your faith, deny your faith and live. In the face of death, the man sung, the cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back. He was shot dead like the rest of his family. But with their death, a miracle took place. The chief who had ordered the killings was moved by the faith of this man. Who was this man that he would have this man, this guy and his wife and his children die for someone who lived in a faraway land 2,000 years ago. There must be some supernatural power involved. And I want it. So he started looking into it. A bit later in a confession of faith, he said, I too belong to Jesus Christ. And when that happened, the spirit broke in the entire tribal community announced that they believed in Jesus too. The entire village was saved. Simon Peter answered and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? For you have the words of eternal life. Now most of us would say we would lay our life down for our family, right? Pretty sure you all would. Okay. What would you lay down for your Savior? That's a tough question, and I hope none of us will ever have to make the choice of laying our lives down for someone else. But in reality, that's exactly what God calls us to do. Not to step into death for another, but to kill those things that keep us from Him. The other day, I was up in the cigar shop with a friend, and I'm looking out through the window. The sun was shining. It got warm all of a sudden. And I looked at the trees, they were lit up in their fall splendor. They hadn't got the leaves beat off with rain yet and blown away. And I thought, how blessed I am. It struck me, it was like a moment of clarity. How blessed I am. And how blessed you are. How blessed we all are. In this country, we are blessed beyond measure. The poorest of us are wealthy than most of the people in the world. If you have spare change in your pocket, you are wealthier than 60% of the world. If you have a flush toilet at home, you are wealthier than 80% of the world. And we won't even go into how wealthy you are if you have toilet paper for that toilet. How blessed we are. And yet we still cling to our uncertainty. We cling to our fears and our God, small g, that keeps us from the lives we are meant to live in Christ. I don't know about you, but I know how important it was for Jesus to lay everything down for me. He came for the express reason to die. And you cannot stop someone who comes to die. 
everything we thought he had, he gave up for us, even to the point of taking all of our sins upon himself. See, it's one thing to be involved in war or to have someone attack you and to grab, you know, get the guns. You know, a lot of, a lot of you got guns, you got weapons, you got, now you got all this stuff. It's one thing to grab that and charge the enemy, and that takes a brave soul. But it takes an even braver soul to drop it all and walk in to die. And that's what my Savior did for me. That's what he did for you. That's what he did for all of us. So I'd like you to think about that today as we join countless others around the globe partaking of the Lord's Supper. When I asked for just a moment or two before that, that you would just be quiet and think of the small G's that we run to instead of the big G, our God. Those things that we keep, those things that we stack into the ship that we leave on the shore so we have an exit strategy. There is no exit strategy in Christianity. There is no just in case. There should be no just in case I get scared. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you, for my burden is light. What ships have you left on the shoreline. After you've done that, we celebrate a communion that is open. If you believe in the Lord, if he's your savior, you're welcome to come and partake of communion. When you're ready, come. Remember, I don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. But Jesus did know what was going to happen tomorrow. He knew it was going to happen in a couple hours. He knew it was going to happen that night. He knew that one of those runs right there at this table, one of his friends was going to condemn him to death, sell him out. He knew that before that time, and yet he didn't throw that man out. He picked up the bread and he said, this is my body, which will be broken for you, given up for you. And he took it, and to, to make a point that has resonated through the ages, he broke it. This is my body. It will soon be broken for you. And then he took the cup, and he said, this is the cup that symbolizes the new and the everlasting covenant, my blood, his blood washed away our sins. As you come this morning, do these things in remembrance of me.
sing a new song for him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to in all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything and I will adore you. Flashes of lightning, rolls of thunder, blessing, strength, and honor, glory, and power be to you, the only wise King. Yeah. Holy, holy, holy is the who was and is and is to come. Yes, for all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything. I will adore you. Filled with wonder, awestruck wonder at the presence of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water, such a marvelous mystery. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Yes, with all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. So as we prepare to leave here today, we go back into the world, leave our little safe room. Remember, what ships do you need to get rid of? What exit strategy do you need to burn? Because there's no turning back. No turning back. We need to follow Jesus. So go in peace, to love and serve the Lord, and to be His faithful ambassadors in a world that so desperately needs to hear the good news. Amen.